Greetings everyone, my name is Etterville, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Starward Rogue. During the last part, I continued my behemoth run through floors 5 and 6, and continued my success with getting a whole bunch of great perks and upgrades. So here I am in floor 7, and hopefully I'll be able to complete this and co do a complete full run with this successfully. That is, I hope, unless my fortunes get reversed at the last floor, which did happen once before with, I believe, the Alpha Mech. Now, as I don't have much to say, I'll be mostly silent throughout this part, unless I find some interesting rooms, some dire situations, or visit a shop, or come across some upgrades that are useful. I'm um, sure I'll just pick that up anyway, but I will lose it immediately in one of these rooms. If there's one thing I would have liked as an extra perk, it'd be more missiles, but I usually sacrifice missile more missiles for more energy, so I guess it balances out. So let's begin by going down. Wow, that's a pretty awesome upgrade. As long as I don't heal my hull in any way, I'll get 25% weapon damage. This combo with the plus 30 energy capacity is going to be really useful until the final boss fight or a certain boss fight. Hopefully I'll be able to keep the shields. Uh, hopefully I can uh, avoid healing until I get to the final boss encounter. That would be awesome. That means taking no damage outside of shield damage. Also, I was getting stuck over there because somehow I kept getting lodged halfway through the blocks due to my increased movement speed or something. All right, time for first action. Yeah, I took one point of damage there, or two points of damage, because some of the bullets got camouflaged at the floor, as I mentioned before. Like, I didn't really realize that there were blue bullets here until I walked right into them, because they somewhat blended in with the purple background. That will be much more of a bigger problem on the other difficulty modes, where there are more bullets flying around. So I'll have to avoid taking any held pickups until I get to the final boss. That may become a problem. Oh, and I picked up the health somewhere around there because that also gets camouflaged. Uh, oh well, I lost plus 20 energy. It's not too much of a loss. Darn you, Dark Demands, Demisne. They'll always cause me numerous problems. 
I presume on the higher difficulties there's also a light version of the Demisne, which is even more difficult. Oh well, at least it's not too much of a loss, but I'm I'm going to miss the plus 25% damage which I had for two rooms. Uh, if the only of the background was less camouflage, then again I could fix that myself by just decreasing the graphic settings, like turning off the moving backgrounds. Maybe on the harder difficulty settings I will uh, do that for safety reasons. Oh, wow, I didn't realize that our course was going to be right over there. That was a little bit scary. And these arc choruses are even more durable than usual. If there's another thing I would like in this game, it would be a little bit more color coding of enemy projectiles. Because, for example, in one of my other LPs of the game Drifting Lands, enemy projectiles did have a black outline, whereas mine didn't have the black outline, so I knew how to distinguish between the attack types. And each color indicated a different damage type, but here it can be a little bit difficult to figure out which damage type is which. Next factor is less, but speed is much higher. Wow. Hmm, I won't knock enemies back, but it deals the same amount of damage and has the same amount of speed. Or much better speed, so I think I'll take this. That definitely seems like a good upgrade. Which one should I do? I'll take the risk and do a critical hit. Let's hope it doesn't end up in, my, in me dying. And yeah, this is definitely dealing more damage over time. Just gotta be a little bit careful though. Oh, that's explaining why I'm not dealing as much damage as I thought I would. It's because of those uh, rotating orbs that are deflecting my shots, pushing my shots away. Who's firing at me? Oh, dark green ice carriers. Oh neat, several key cards and a lot more health pieces. For some reason the graphics of these seem to be quite oversized compared to the rest. Eventually when I come back to this room, I'll pick up the extra missiles and whatnot. Even though some of these are pretty good, like doubling the damage by critical hit or gaining one health after killing five enemies, well, I really want to save my health for the boss fight, especially with my mech's larger profile. If it was, a, if my mech was a little bit smaller or I had about five more health, I would definitely consider getting the first and or third uh, health shop or sacrificial shop item. They seem really useful. 
Especially the latter one if I go to hard difficulties, especially with boss fights with a lot of enemies. That would be extremely useful. Oh, and there's Terminus right now. Of course, I will not be visiting Terminus until I finish the rest of the floor because I may get some other upgrades that may be useful. And of course, while well, I want to get all the XP as I need, maybe I'll be able to get up to level 15 before I fight the boss. Who knows how important that last perk may be. I don't want to take any chances with that. I'm sure, let's see what this does. Alright, this is the random movement circuit, just wait until it wears off. There we go, let's see what all the other things do. Good, movement speed is increased by 10%. Oh, okay. 15 seconds, unfortunately, uh, this wouldn't be the best idea to use. And medical emergency, well, this would have been better if it was on the previous floor. Because I'm on the final floor, that power-up's gonna be useless. Alright, on to the next mini boss, Loco. Let me just get close enough to him and whittle him down immediately. Yeah, Loco is really a pushover if you have a lot of heavy weaponry. He becomes less of a pushover if you're really fragile, though. Sure, robot shop. Slowing enemy bullets. Oh, that's gonna be even more awesome. We now have. We have two Defender Drones now, so if they don't fire at the same time, we can extend the amount of time that we're invulnerable, so this is pretty powerful. 
I would have liked the Fusion Defense Drone as well, but, well, I don't have enough credits yet. So, I guess we can't win them all. Oh, never mind, they fire off at the same time. Unfortunate. If they fired off at slightly different in time intervals, they'd make it a lot more useful. I now feel like I wish I got the fusion defense system. Well, at least this increases the area it protects against.
Oh no, tree bubbles at once? Oh goodness gracious. I want to take care of the Gemini sisters first. Normally I wouldn't speak up here, but the reason I did was because of all those bubbles. This is going to be quite a thing. Especially because of all of that happening. Thank you for washing away all the projectiles though. Really appreciate it. If I didn't have the ability to slow down time or to clean out all those projectiles, I would have had to use one or two missiles there. I dread having to face more than tree bubbles at once at higher difficulties. Or whatever their adult versions are, because bubbles or eggs, they hatch into larva. I dread how the child, adolescent, and especially the adult version of this will be. Just imagine fighting a bubble boss. Oh, thank goodness, for a second there I thought I phased to the explosives, or the bullets, but in reality it was one of my drone shields blocking everything. Oh, two condemned chambers. Hmm. I'm going to take the risk starting with the bottom one. Dance Master. Dodge and weave. I'm just going to slow down time just to make Dance Master a lot easier. Dance Master. Especially because the global timer doesn't actually respect the fact that I'm slowing down time using the one perk. So this makes it a lot easier, otherwise this would be a lot scarier. And this would be a lot harder too. Nah, I'm okay.
At last, level 15. Let's see. Missiles. Energy. Let's go with missiles. We need more missile damage for the boss fight. Well, that was a rather quick room. I just noticed I'm almost at 90 credits needed for that one upgrade. I'm really thankful that the RNG was really in my favor for that one. Because I will rush back to the shop and get that fusion shield. That seems to be really awesome. Let's see, major item storage, let's see. One health shard. Well, that was a straight upgrade. Thank you, game. Hmm, 80. Is that enough, though? Well, I have one last Condemned Chamber to go through, so maybe that'll grant me enough credits in order to get uh, acquire what I seek. Uh, it doesn't seem to be teleporting me to the correct location. If only I could select on screen on the map which the teleport location to teleport to. That would make things a lot more convenient. Alright, on to the second Condemned Chamber mission. Beware the Rebound, aka this one. So always keep on moving and this will become a cakewalk. Because I remember doing mission before with other mechs without having the ability to slow down time. And it became quite hairy near the end. What's times 10%? I'll take the risk. Hopefully it doesn't decrease my damage by too much. Oh, it's only it only decreased it by 10%. Oh, it's this kind of room. The one where all of these turrets fire when I fire. Okay, where's the last enemy? Did I kill it? I guess I did. One left. Yeah, I seem to be doing about the same amount of damage, but I'm firing faster. So it makes up for it as long as it can hit my shots.
Oh darn, I ran out of credits in order to purchase that. Well, I don't have 90, so I'll just re I'll just get the crossover shop. Where was the robotic shop? All the way here, and I explored all of the floor, so I guess that's it. Well, this was certainly a very fruitful floor. This seems to be the closest part of where it's going to take me, so I'll take it. But this was a relatively fruitful floor. Sad and I'm only four credits off, but you can't win them all, I suppose. But I got a whole bunch of uh, awesome upgrades throughout the run, so everything works out in the end. Let's see. Yeah, just four credits off. But I can already slow down time as long as I keep moving, so I guess we have a good enough substitute. If I had this, it would act almost like the alpha, uh, not the alpha mech. Uh, the the redshift mech, where as long as you didn't shoot or move, everything moves slowly. So let's have the corrosive one. That seems to be a good enough trade-off. And let's go purchase as many XP gains as possible. Well, I guess this is all we can do. The only thing left for this floor and the run itself is, of course, the final boss. So let's run all the way up here. And before we go into the final boss, let's review all of the stuff that we got. Pause the video if you want to see the details of each of the perks and upgrades I got. But I got a whole bunch of awesome upgrades throughout this run. And I would say this is my newest best run, or it's tied with the Arsenal mech as being my favorite run so far. A lot of great upgrades, a lot of great robotic companions I got. Especially the one perk which I got completely by accident by killing that one shopkeeper. This run could have gotten really a lot differently if I hadn't killed uh, the cheap item shop shopkeeper. And I got the Hornet's Nest, pretty nice weapon, the automatic blunderbuss which will always be helpful. Too bad I didn't have a better primary weapon, but this will do. The triple missile launcher which I was worried I wouldn't get which I've been getting so far in a lot of my mech runs. Basically three times the awesome of a regular missile launcher, and the FTL module for moving and attacking faster, and spread shot. I'll be taking a short break, so I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back from my break, and it's time to fight the final boss, Terminus. So let's see how this will go. I have my get out of jail free card with uh, code overdrive in case I want to use my special weapons more. So for the first phase we need to wail on Terminus just a little bit and then all those uh, drones will come. Or rather I should say core blades and core racers. The core racers are where things start to get really difficult. But as long as I can keep moving on, uh, moving forward it'll be fine. Especially because I have all the crit upgrades and I have all these shields that are appearing over and over. So it uh, specifically the shield uh, drones I have, as well as those washers. I call them the drone washers because they clear away all bullets uh, that are nearby me. But as I said, I wish these two uh, bullet clearing drones fired at off times or not at the same time. That way I'd be able to become more invulnerable for longer periods of time. But oh well, I guess that would make it a lot more broken. Uh, and, even though, and even though they fire at the same time, they cover a larger area in the process, so it's not a complete loss. I put myself on the slow walk moving speed toggle, so I can always keep everything else moving at slow speed. Just walk back and forth. When I fought this when I fought this final boss with the Alpha Mech, it was a lot harder because I didn't have this many defensive drones. I had a lot more offensive drones though. So th this entire run was a lot more on the defensive side, even though I played it more offensively during the uh, enemy rooms and several of the mini boss and boss encounters, but for the final boss and the way this mech works, I've been playing it much more defensively. After all, this mech has more bulky armor, making it more defensive, and I already have two shield. I have three defensive types of abilities anyway, or three defensive drones, I mean. Alright, the hard part, the razors, where everything starts to go a bit crazy. I want to try at least dissipating one of these razors as quickly as possible. I 
at least I can keep a steady distance or close enough distance to him or it before it was a lot more problematic. And my drones are actually hitting him properly. Alright, on to the second one. Oh, at least the core razor moves slowly towards me. If it didn't, I would be I could end up soft locking myself during the boss fight. That would be really embarrassing to happen. Well, I wonder if it's actually possible to soft lock yourself in the boss fight if you end up locking the core razor or knocking the core razor right into Terminus's temporary shields. Oh, I'm out. Well, I'll be saving it up until. I'm going to save up code overdrive unless I'm in a really bad situation. Preferably near the final part of the boss fight where I can just spam the right click ability. Because once I activate code overdrive, I'll never hold, I'll never let go of the right click button. Alright, time for the next enemy. And I, as I've been speculating throughout this LP, uh, when it summons all these bosses again, on harder difficulty settings we'll be seeing different bosses reappearing. Like we had Palisade before, we have Palisade and Wallmaster or something, but on harder difficulties I suppose we'll see some other ones, more difficult ones, like maybe Mirror version 3 or something. And on easier difficulties we'll have easier bosses to refight. Also I do appreciate the fact that once you defeat a boss or boss reappearance all of the projectiles on screen dissipate. I suppose that it, that doesn't happen on the higher difficulty settings. I will be f seeing that soon enough after probably two or three parts. As in the next part I'll be trying out the Crimson Moon, keyword being trying or sampling. I'm not sure how well I'll be able to do with it. And here's Centennial, the one where all the projectiles you have to dodge and weave against. Which I completely make minced meat out of because of all my defensive drawing. Like this hap when this happens, it's completely defenseless. Alright, time for the final part of the fight where Terminus starts racing towards me. Ever so slowly. I think this is the good part of the fight to spam missiles. I mean, we're uh, nearing the end after all. I'll save some though. Okay. Time to spam. It says 5 shots on down there, but in reality it's infinite for 15 seconds. Oh, I'm out. That was fast. Oh, never mind, I still have it. I didn't realize. Even though it said 0 over there, I didn't see the infinity symbol or realize that. Whoops. I could have dealt some more damage, but it's not much of a problem. Alright, down to my splinter cannon, or whatever these pattern, can pattern cannons are. Oh boy, oh, I almost lost the perfect run there. Victory, we completed the entire game, or should I say the entire behemoth run perfectly. Oh, and I got an achievement unlock complete run with Incredibility the 1. Oh, by killing all those shopkeepers you can unlock credibilities, or incredibilities. And I perfect run Terminus, I basically made minced meat out of it, and while it wasn't a cakewalk, it was certainly a challenge, especially near the end, where Terminus was inching towards me. It was pretty fun. Really, the main thing that made this fight a lot easier, and most of the boss fights for that matter, wasn't the mech itself. It was rather the one uh, perk, or one, the one incredibility, combined with all those defensive drones, and some of those uh, offensive drones. The one for slowing down times and the final bosses and its cohorts, projectile firing speeds and rate, while not slowing down mine outside of my projectile speed but not my firing rate. And all my defensive drones either eating the projectiles, like the shield one just cleaning projectiles as it goes over it, or just completely washing them away with those with the washing uh, the drone, which whose name I completely forgot so far. I really should know it because it's one of my favorite ones so far. 
As I said earlier, I wish they would fire the two ones I got fired at different rates. But I suppose it would make it even more broken because it would stay more invulnerable for longer periods of time. Just imagine wh how powerful it would be if you had four or five of them and they alternated every two or three seconds. It would completely break the game, especially at higher difficulty settings. Alright, on to the mech itself. Well, the main thing about this mech that makes it distinct is the fact that it has increased bulky armor. What that translates to is that on higher floors and more difficult uh, difficulty settings, the mech will take less damage per hit. You don't notice it in the earlier floors because most enemies deal one or two points of damage, but in lighter floors where with base mechs or the normal mechs, you take six to seven points of damage per shot, like against the bubble projectiles, well, you'll notice the effects immediately, because as you may have noticed, when I took a hit from the bubble projectile, I only took two or three points of damage, which is massive, especially because of how dangerous the bubbles can normally be, and combined with my higher health that I found, especially thanks to one of the perks I got, which granted me the ability to destroy any missile block with any weapon, well, I was able to get a lot of free uh, health shards without having to waste missiles. And as I said uh, two parts back, well, the part before this one and the first part of the Behemoth run, getting that one perk was a, essentially a much better version of the Torpedo Cannon because I could mix it in with anything else. Although, although the Torpedo Cannon is awesome, it's not the best weapon, and it kind of loses its steam in the latter floors, floor 6 and 7, where more rapid-firing weapons or more energy-efficient weapons are better. But otherwise, I really enjoyed this mech. The things that really made it made me succeed were, of course, the behemoth's extra bulky armor, the one perk which I got by complete accident by killing the a cheap item shop shopkeeper by complete mistake. If I hadn't killed him, I wouldn't have gotten this one ability and I may have probably failed to run, I'm not sure. Because the other problem with this mech, or one of the main problems, is its increased profile. So it makes it a lot harder to dodge projectiles. And because it, if I didn't have the one's slow movement or slowing down time properties, yeah, you can see where I was going. I wouldn't be able to do several of the condemned rooms because I would just die from or take a huge amount of damage from all the projectiles. Especially in the lighter floors when there are a lot of enemies with fast moving projectiles. Whereas with that aforementioned the one perk, they become a lot easier because I can just maneuver around them. This became especially apparent in the bubble rooms and the final boss encounter where I was able to navigate or circumnavigate all the projectiles being fired by the core blades, razors, palisade, centennial, and terminus itself, witties. And I can't I can't forget to mention all the weapons, the triple missile launcher being pretty nice, although not as powerful as before. I always kept the uh, BAB or BAB blunderbuss, which was a pretty awesome upgrade. I didn't want to take a plasma shotgun because I couldn't rapid fire it as much, although that was a pretty nice competitor. And the hornet's nest, or whatever it's called, for firing, or whatever that well, final weapon was, which rapid fired for about the same amount of damage as the uh, the spread shot cannon. That was pretty nice. Although I would have liked the longer range weapon to complement or to prevent uh, to patch up some of the issues with the blunderbuss, but it worked out pretty well. A medium range weapon with a shorter range weapon. So overall I enjoyed playing with the Behemoth, although as I said it was carried by all the lucky perks and upgrades I got. Although I would say that the upgrade pad or perks that you can get per level were pretty awesome and they were really suiting the Behemoth's more bulky style of gameplay, especially the upgrades where you got a lot of extra missiles or shields. Especially the shield upgrade, that's awesome. That was pretty awesome to give for this one, and it really suits this mech's bulkier playstyle. So bravo, Logo Rogue, for making another mech that I quite enjoyed. This is up there with the Arsenal mech as being one of my favorite mechs. Although, as I said, if you don't get the one perk, as I repeatedly have stated throughout this outro, some of the higher difficulty settings with all the projectiles, they can be a bit of a problem. But this entire experience taught me one thing. If I want to take a more risk, I should kill more of the shopkeepers more often, because they may drop some very useful incredibilities. The one will be especially useful, I may reroll my misery run eventually in the future to get the one incredibility so I can actually win the run. Because I believe the misery run is going to be quite miserable to go through, that's for sure. Well then, in the next part, I'll probably be sampling Logo Rogue's sixth and final modded mech, the Crimson Moon.
Well then, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Doodles!